Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media. Um, I'm on a different system. <laughs> I don't know if what I'm recording is what I'm meant to be recording, but I'll give it a go. Um, I kind of can see myself at the moment. Um, oh, gosh, sorry, the, the place is a mess at the moment. It's a bit busy. Uh, I've had a, a busy day. I was doing some work with Artworks Alliance, and we were talking about participatory arts, which is always nice. And I wanted to start this video off uh, with a big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon um, and the, the the kind of the, the small, the, the hopefully small uh, number of subscriptions that it really does make a difference. And it kind of gives me a sense that there are people out there who are uh, listening to the podcasts and, and enjoy them, maybe, maybe enjoy, enjoy them or find them useful or interesting or thought provoking. So that really helps me to kind of gauge a sense of 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 what we can be talking about and i kind of need to put uh figure out how to how to do this in a in a broader way so it appeals to more people um so what i've i've done with the the funds that i've raised through uh or been given uh generously given uh through um through patreon is uh i've paid for the renewal of the podcasting license uh for decentered media and for radio Lear, which is the radio station we're kind of kicking kicking along bit by bit and i've also paid for and renewed the cdsp license so uh, with ofcom so it means that if if we get the funds and have applied for some funding uh, no idea whether that funding will come through then we can maybe launch launch the station so it's uh, an interesting time and uh, kind of really thinking about how we can use AI uh, and the tools that we've got to to be creating some of this content and doing some of the work and uh, making some interesting uh, stuff. Um, so it's kind of yeah. I mean, I'd love to hear back from 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 you if you're if you watch this or listen to this, then then please do send me a message and and, and let me know how you get on with any of it. Radio Lear, you can find it at radiolear.uk, so L-E-A-R uh, dot UK. And uh, Decentered Media is decentered.co.uk. Um, and I'm also on, both are on Twitter or X, um, Instagram, but I've kind of stopped using Instagram very much. I really can't cope with reels. Uh, and also um, Blue Sky threads and various other ones, some are more amenable to regular use than others blue sky is a bit dull twitter is a bit flaky uh you know it's kind of uh, uh hit and miss at the moment um but you know it, it's it's that's what we're here to figure out really is how and why we can be using media for different purposes and i posted a blog which i wanted to make the main theme of this discussion uh is really about um kind of the, the the democratic deficit that we have with media in the uk uh and is uh, a, a a number of people are there's the media reform coalition are talking to people at the moment uh they're doing work with um uh, uh, various parties asking questions they're going to go to the labor party conference i think they've just been at the green party conference there's you know lots of you know kind of engagements about what makes a more uh, responsive uh, accountable model of media in the UK. And what prompted me to think about this was the report, the interim report from Ofcom for the local media review. Uh, and really just you're kind of very weak on the notion of accountability, very weak on the notion of civic participation. Kind of I describe it as hand wringing really that, oh, it's nothing to do the decline of media in the UK and local media particularly. It's nothing to do with us, Gov, you know, DCMS and, and Ofcom, they've they've presided over this situation and they've not really ever done anything to put in place any backstops that prevent sliding into, you know, homogenized, distant, consolidated, internationalized content, automated content, syn synthetically uh, produced content, uh, simulated local content. And they're kind of, um, you know, they're, 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 they're kind of, it's standing back from the idea and, and if you read the uh, i posted a blog about this and i've made some comments through better media which we are making a submission to ofcom to say really halt this report now and, and reconsider the whole process 
and bring a, a wider range of people in to the debate and the discussion. So people from civic society, people in community groups, people, uh, public authorities, we all need uh, um, to have platforms of communication. And I have a really simple rule of thumb, and it's a, it's, it's, I didn't invent this rule of thumb, and uh, perhaps not the person who told me it didn't invent it either, but they passed it on to me, so I'm passing it on to you. And it was Lucinda Guy at Sound Art Radio uh, who you know, said it's really important that you have somewhere where you can go locally. It's like a bus ride away where you can get involved with your media. And when you think of... You know, the, the way radio stations, the national networks and, and even the supposedly local stations now, they don't have local uh, studios. They don't have local offices. You can't walk up to them and knock on the door. The Leicester Mercury isn't produced in Leicester anymore. Uh, the Liverpool Echo isn't produced in Liverpool anymore. You can't walk up to that and knock on the door. You you know, you, you I don't know what you have to do to find the people who... Uh, uh, you know, write articles and news articles for them because the complaint is from many journalists is that they're sitting at their, sitting at their desks doing clickbait articles from everything that they, they can get from social media, Google, Facebook and the likes and press releases that they get sent. So it's, uh, you know, you've got to be able to go knock on the door. I think that's a really important, you know, kind of counterweight to um, the the kind of the, the before everything flies off into the air and it's like we're all concerned with the high value production stuff of Amazon and Netflix and all that kind of stuff, which is, you know, high, high, you know, it's great. You know, there's, there's lots of really good programs that I watch and, you know, like, like being part of and a fan community. Um, but where do I go to take part in that, the, the local conversations and discussions and dialogues and, that ability to kind of go and talk and look into the eyes of the person who's presenting the programs or making the editorial decisions or, you know, is kind of uh, making the tea or is, uh, you know, is, is, is choosing the music, you know, though, though you've got, it, it's, you want people who live within your community and are connected with your community and are, have come out of your community, however diverse and interesting that community might be. You need people who have that local knowledge uh, and the kind of the, the the typical way that our media has uh, uh, kind of evolved now has been to take advantage of networking and systems. And you know, these are all great technologies, but they're really about focusing con control uh, uh, on the basis of efficiency. So you lose out. What you lose is the local accountability and the, the ability of people to interact directly with the people who are making local content in their area. And that's why it's, you know, very disappointing about the BBC's decision to uh, to really kind of take an axe to a lot of BBC local radio and have these generic regional uh, programmes which don't satisfy anybody. Um, because we've not invested in the culture of local uh, media. So the, 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 the problem is that this leads to a democratic deficit um, and it clashes with, you know, there's issues around uh, content moderation and free speech. And we've seen Elon Musk uh, really kind of courting controversy um, in, in kind of quite direct ways at the moment with people not very happy about the way that he's uh, advocating for the platform that he spent billions buying and seems intent on running into the ground. Uh, but there are alternatives. You can use other platforms. and But they do give people a voice and they do allow a certain element of freedom of speech. Um, and there is an interesting tension between, you know, socially responsible free speech and absolute free speech. And, you know, there's always that element in a democracy that, you know, you're not free to shout, run into a, a, a theatre and shout fire, for example, is the classic uh, example however um you know uh, uh, you know you're free to block people and you're free you, you know you if you're retweeting people so i've developed a strategy really and i'm not <laughs> maybe getting off the tack in terms of democratic accountability but i think it's important that we need our own that the public the citizens need to develop our own sense of uh, responsible um value use of these platforms why do we wait for government to to explain to us how this works uh, i mean I, I always used to use this analogy with students was that 
when do you become responsible uh, as a as a driver? And I think, oh, well, maybe when you passed your test. No, as soon as you sit behind the wheel in a wheel in a car, whether you've passed your test or not, whether you've had any instruction previously or not, you are responsible for that vehicle, whether it's parked in your you know uh, garage or whether it's out on the street. You are responsible for that ve- that vehicle. Now, once you passed your test. Uh, but you know we don't pass a test for using social media. We don't have like a driving test for it, and nor sh- nor should we. What, how do you learn how to use social media? Well, you use it from your friend. You learn from your friends. You learn from other people that you see around you. You imitate and copy and and, and emulate what other people are doing. And if other 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 people aren't using it responsibly, if they've discovered the power of antagonism and indignation fueled clickbait then therefore they're not going to, you know, it doesn't set a good example. But So maybe we as citizens are at fault, although people who need to start to generate a sense of social responsibility be out of the way. And I, I, I'm not being virtuous here. I know I use social media, uh, you know, kind of maybe more in the past. I know I use it, you know, everybody uses social media in a kind of a, a way that everybody can draw criticism to. But, you know, it's like it's like a secular firing squad. Show me somebody who's show, show me somebody somebody who's perfect in the way that they use social media, and I'll show you a liar. Um, there, there's always something there that we do with social media which is can can be pulled apart, and that's just life. That's just you know being human, and we should embrace that. But at the same time, we should be doing things in such a way that we know and we can. You know, we would like other tri- people to treat us in an open, honest, transparent, non-antagonistic uh, way, which is fair and even-handed uh, and equitable and, you know, just. Um, so it's, you know, it's got to come from citizens. It's got to come from the users. Now, the problem, I suppose, is this this imbalance about automation and all the clickbait accounts and the robotized account, the bots and, you know, the, the Russian Chinese like uh, uh, robot you know, posting farms, you know anything that like that, and the weighting of the algorithm. Because one of the th- the crucial thing is we don't have any say or any control over how the algorithm is used and developed. So it's like we're sitting here. I'm sitting here in Leicester, in the UK, and the algorithm for what I see on my social media feed is decided in California, uh, or wherever you know San Francisco, wherever it's it, it's it is. And, you know, you, you've got no control over that. Um, so the best I can do and the best I can say is kind of, okay, well, I've, I'm going to, st- I've tried to stop retweeting things. There are some things I do retweet, um, but, you know, write an original comment to go with it. Say something from yourself. Stop letting other people speak for you. Put your own thoughts into it. If you see an article that you write, you like, and you want to share it, post an original thought or comment if you're doing something it used to be the case when social media first started everybody complained that it was all so mundane people showing pictures of their their dinner you know people you know going out for a trip getting on a bus show that show the real life that you live the neighborhood that you live in the people that you interact with you don't have to fake it you know it's not a pr exercise it's just reflect you know the 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 the, the experiences that you have or we have as as individuals and and where that comes from and i think that's a a, a really important counterbalance to the exploitation uh, and the, the kind of extractive nature of a lot of what uh, social media platforms, because remember, they're primarily designed to make money. And the way they make money is they manage attention and they get your attention by promoting and pushing things, stories and articles that you know primarily rile you and you know kind of fuel your indignation about something. And you see lots of articles and reports now which I've, I've, I've kind of figured this out with like youtube and watching many things now about the american um election and there's a lot of things which people are just focusing on the minutiae of what somebody says and how somebody says something in order to extrapolate from that the whole kind of contempt that they want to express about a, a political agenda whether it's on one side or the other side because that's what grabs attention and it's about kind of it's it's not about um being fair uh it's not about 
looking at things in a kind of measured way. It's not about being deep about them. The danger is, and there's, again, an awful lot of uh, this comes up on YouTube, of people then start to veer down the kind of conspiracy theory route and that you get involved in complex, deceptive webs type thinking. And so before you know it, you've moved away from your your practical experience. So that democratic deficit is something that exists online in the virtual world. But when you walk out of your front door, when you go to your local shops, when you're standing in the bus queue, um, is is your world that virtual environment? Is it is it the fueled the same way? Now, if we're all on our phones and we're all plugged into our mobile on network devices, then then maybe it is, and, and and maybe I'm mistaken, and maybe I'm a bit too old, old in the tooth, too uh, long in the tooth to, to 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 consider these things properly. However, I think when you actually go out into the world and you interact with people on a face to face basis, you get a completely different view of the world, and we've got to remind ourselves that that is the starting point for our civic engagement, public discussion, civic society, uh, not the the stuff that's fueled by. Uh, uh, very clever, you know, very influential marketing and uh, uh, network management administrators. So it's kind of what we lack. Uh, you know, in the UK, we do lack a sense that we're, we we don't in, invest in social cohesion. We, and part of that, we don't invest in media literacies. A whole sense of kind of it's handed over to, you know, the, the media studies, uh, you know, debate over the years. These are Mickey Mouse courses. Well, they're, they're Mickey Mouse courses because we've not really been um, critical enough. We've not really developed a way to challenge the whole kind of structure and nature of what is. We, we've got we've gone down to some, you know, to, to some extent, they're kind of quite philosophical media courses or quite practical. Um, but they, but they kind of, you know, we're not training people up to, you know, one learn how the media works through practical experience, which I think is the uh, significant benefit of participation in community media uh, and two we're not you know asking people to figure out how to be skeptic skeptical about these things so ofcom's role is to promote the interest of the consumer the sorry the citizen and then the consumer and i you know kind of primarily what it does is it promotes the interest of the, when it comes to media literacies it promotes the interest of the consumer there's some work being done and uh, Sonia Livingston at the uh, LSE uh, does a lot of work around media literacies and children, uh, and it's you know it's kind of the, the the but that's where we invest in of what how 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 can we have uh, a well informed um, uh, generation of people come through our, through our schools who have a sense of you know kind of what how to evaluate the information that they're being presented in a in a uh, an open way but through the channels that are enabled through digital uh, media platforms and I, but i think that needs to be extended that needs to be something which is a lifelong skill a lifelong uh, capacity that we all need to invest in that we are you know we're not uh, subject to um, extortion uh, is that is that too harsh a word to use about the way that we use media and the kind of um you know the kind of you know you you can think of one or two uh, figures who you know Elon Musk comes to mind, Mark Zuckerberg comes to mind, and these kind of figures. But there's you know there's plenty of you know who runs Google, who runs Apple, uh, who decides the policies that you know the the, the platforms are, 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 are that are kind of now ubiquitous. Uh, who decides what is appropriate? And I think it was very telling when. You know, uh, Keir Starmer uh, said uh, uh, through the disturbances, the riots uh, recently in England was that, you know, you're not immune from the law. And if, if as individuals, if you've been citing public disorder, um, then, you, you know, you have accountability for that and you can go and many people have gone to prison for that. But that also you know, uh, uh, is something that is the proprietors of these platforms and newspapers also have to be aware of. So I wonder if, you know, part of the, you know, part of what we have to do is to have uh, uh, improved accountability is that, you know, in order to run one of these platforms, you have to have, uh, uh, you know, you have to live in the UK, you know, you have to have your, your house here, you have to send your kids to the local schools, uh, you know, just to just to make sure that you're not living in some kind of, 
you know, the the Channel Islands in in a tax haven in the the Bahamas or something. But actually, you do, you know, you have, uh, as they say, skin in the game about being game about being a a UK citizen. So it's you know we've got to think about this and we've got to come up with some kinds of um, approach that makes this practical uh, and turns this into something which we can we can evaluate and we can look at things that make it work. We can see where it works and we see where it doesn't work because we've got you know many challenges and the and the the breakdown of social cohesion is a significant one at the moment. Uh, and and there's an imbalance about you know what kind of stories get uh, discussed and shared, and what kind of stories just you know it's, it's like you know I, I I do look at the the Mail Online and the, today is the day of the report the damning report into the Grenfell Ta- Tower fire uh, you know completely damning it's on the front at the top of the uh, Mail Online. Uh, for a few hours, maybe five or six hours, and it's been replaced by some story about some, I think it's about Oasis or something like that. And it's that weight, you know, that's a story that should be top of the headlines for a week, you know, a, a two weeks, a month, because it's of such a, a, a monumental uh, importance. Um, but it's easiest for us to get lost in 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 entertainment in dross in drivel and and it's down to us you know because we 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 read these things uh they they get our attention and and we turn our attention to them because the hard stuff the big stories you know the international news it all just seems a bit too difficult so so one of the things i i kind of um i'm interested in would like to you know kind of explore and see how it works in other countries is the the german scandinavian concept concept of a building, which is about training your citizens and your and your your, your uh, society to actually deal with the hard challenges. And and the way I understand this from what I've read about it is that that the Finnish uh, in the nineteen twenties, one of the poorest nations on you know in Europe, <clears throat> um, no natural resources that they knew about at the time. And they had to make a decision. What do we do? How do we develop as a nation? How do we grow? Well, they chose to invest in education. And it was a multi-generational investment. And then now they're at the top of the league tables internationally in terms of uh, capability uh, for, de- you know, c- kind of uh, you know, uh, the, the STEM subjects, the science, technology, engineering, mathematics, but also, you know, kind of world affairs. You know, it's it's a generation of people who can take a leadership position because they've not backed away from the difficult conversations and the difficult things that people have to do in a in in a social democracy and i think that you know the period of time that we've lived through which has been you know 40 years really of um of of easy answers that you kind of you know you can the market will provide for you or you know you it's just about luck uh, and your attitude towards entrepreneurialism, your attitude towards uh, uh, productivity or innovation, kind of doesn't really matter because in the in the UK these days, you know, if you bought a house, great, great on you. You know, you can just sit and watch the value of that go up um, year after year after year. It never seems to go down. It's not exactly a market. Um, and and the same with your pension. You know, these things. And anybody, you know, I hear very seldom these days of people who take. Uh, who choose to take mid-career breaks and go and do something different, maybe set up a business because they've got an idea, because, you know, except in some very niche and narrow uh, technology-based um, skills, nuclear science or gene uh, science or chemistry, you know, there's, 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 you know, it's quite narrow and they have to be very high value to support the rest of us. But, you know, we've hollowed this out. It's like the middle is is hollow. Um, so it, it's the the we've got a lot of work to do, and I think being upfront about this that we we won't solve the democratic deficit by simply looking at the top end. And one of the criticisms I've had in the past about some of the approaches towards uh, media democracy has been that a top down kind of approach, waiting for legislation, wait, waiting for people in parliament, waiting for you know kind of people to come to power to to be able to change things. Uh, and it's kind of like, well, you know, we need to get involved at the other end. We need to be grassroots organisers, which is why I'm passionate about community media is that, you know, let's not imitate what we've had in the past. Let's invent something new for the future. 
uh, and let's come up with some new ideas and test that you know the technology is changing uh, and and give people you know kind of we need responsibility we need accountability but we need capability and we need to build on you know civic and social capabilities that are maybe lacking at the moment so that's kind of my general take. It's, uh, you can read a lot more about this on the website. Uh, I would really like to have some conversations about this. So I'm going to be trying to get in contact with people to set up some podcasts in the next uh, in, in the coming weeks uh, and to have some discussion and debate about these things. I don't think I have any of the answers, um, but it's it's nice to talk to people about about their. Uh, uh, other people's uh, uh, insights into these things, and so it'd be great to hear from you as well. So if you're on Twitter, if you're on Twitter X, sorry, uh, it's uh, at Decentered Media. Uh, likewise, Blue Sky is at Decentered Media, and uh, the the website where you can send a message through that is decentered.co.uk. So once again, thank you very much to the Patreon subscribers, and you know if you could see yourself becoming a Patreon subscriber. I've got to work out what it is that, that, that you've got to do to feed this thing. <laughs> I see it on YouTube videos that I watch where people are, you know, thousands and thousands of Patreon subscribers. And it's like constantly asking people to do it. It really does make a difference. If somebody supports this, it just kind of says, you know, keep going, keep, keep investigating the thing, keep looking at things, churning them over, thinking about them, putting, putting your point of view out there, having the conversations. Uh, and, you know, I think it's really important that we do this. I think there's a, you know, hopefully we'll get a, some kind of change uh, is is me- is seen and is measurable fairly soon. But anyway, uh, I'm going to now try and edit this because I'm on a different system. And I'm not sure how it's going to work. But uh, if you're watching it, then, of course, it's worked. So until next time, thank you very much.